Welcome back to Studio Chatter. Our next guest has a very deep love for Christmas and he knows how to show it. Let's welcome Richard Reif to the table. Hello. Hello. Nice to be here. It's so nice this that you are neighbor. here. This is our neighbor. Loved one. <laughs> so some of our neighbors said how fabulous you would be. And then once they started telling me things, I'm like, I remember Colleen, your wife, telling me about all this. And I've been in your little library with all your Christmas readings and posters yes. and collections. So thank I you. have not. So there's a big You're collection. Okay, <laughs> I need to stop by and see that. So we have a, a list of things to talk to okay. you about, but let's just start, tell our viewers a little bit about who you are. Okay, I grew up in Springville, but now I'm a Don, right? Good. Yes. <laughs> I've seen the light, Don's early Thank light. you. <laughs> and uh, and um, I, I went on a mission to Korea. I became a lawyer, Ooh. and I was a lawyer for 40 years. Wow. Now I'm in my repentance process. <laughs> <Your> repentance <laughs> I'm doing okay. well. And uh, no, I was a corporate lawyer for 40 years. Wow. Impressive. And I retired in 2020. Now I'm trying to figure out what to do. Colleen yeah. keeps me busy, my wife. <laughs> I'm good sure. Good year to retire, though. I in 2020. Did, in 2020. Yeah, that's yeah. a good Great year to retire. Year <laughs> yeah. yeah, I retired and then COVID hit and couldn't go anywhere. So, that's so now it's time. time. It's time now. It's time to write books and yes. maybe travel. Yeah. Okay, so tell us a little bit about what you... So I, I want to show you something first before my little book, because this is my love. My favorite story, book, play, movie is A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. Mm. I just love it. And so I have many good memories of life, but I, I thought I would indulge myself with one uh, physical treasure, oh, and so I bought an original. Oh, it wow. came out, this was the cover, but it, it came off, but that's what the cover looked like, and it's been oh, rebound. My. You but had to rebound. That was the cover of it, the little brown? It was the cover, the oh, brown. my heavens. And it was printed, it came out on December 19th, 1843. <gasps> 1843? 1843, and it was uh, sold out, 6,000 copies by Christmas. And then uh, oh, there were thousands right. more sold between Christmas and New Year's. By 1844, the end of the year, there'd been 13 printings that Charles Dickens had done. Oh, and my and one of the unusual things about it was, and I don't know if you can see it, but it had, he commissioned oh, yeah. some pictures to wow. be painted. There's four uh, color ones and four black and white, but this is the ghost of Christmas present. And he paid for that rather than the publisher because he wanted it to be really great. Wow. And, oh, my uh, goodness. So back then, was it the play or was it just the book? It was and just the book. And then we just took off just from there. Just the book, and we took off from there. Okay. okay. And because copyright laws weren't great and people copied it all the time, mm -hmm. he ended up not making as much money as he thought. Oh. So he started doing reading. So he would go around like a play, mm -hmm. but he would be the one there reading it and acting it out and oh. he made a lot of money doing it that way. So interesting, okay. I did not know that. That oh, is that's really neat. Sure. I wanna know, where did you find this? Yes. I found it on Biblio, it's a place where, it's a reputable place where you can get uh, old books. Uh, oh, cool. And so I have a little- And when did you purchase that? that? How many It's been about ago? five or six years oh, ago. Oh, so pretty recent. Yeah. Okay, that, uh, I think that's amazing. That's and so what other treasure. things, like if that's your favorite story, is Christmas just a book? Or story Christmas like or any. And really? I love it because it's a story of redemption. Okay. It's a story of someone who was going down a certain path and the spirits, including his old partner, Jacob Marley, interrupted that path and gradually led him another way, even though it was only one night. They did it all in one night. Yeah, they did it all <laughs> yeah. really fast. But if you read the story, he was grumpy and then less grumpy and then less <laughs> grumpy. And he just... Right. grew into it uh, over time, kind of like we do yeah. if we get, try to get So if I remember right, did I hear correctly that you and your family go to the health we center? Go, we go to the health center theater every year and we go out to dinner before. Okay. And so we, it's, we couldn't get away from it if we wanted to. So it's kids. a long standing family yeah. tradition. Yeah. Kind of like us with the Polar Express. There's yes. some that just stick and it I love meaningful. the Polar Express. Yeah, so <laughs> we fun. do too. Oh, I love that. Okay, so tell us a little bit about so, what happened with about this. 13 years ago, I wrote, I wrote a little book, just a little book of essays about why I love Christmas. One of them is about this. Okay. But it's got some other stories, and I brought one for oh, each of you. Thank you. Let's thank see. you so, so much. Kind. Thank you. 
honoring Christmas in my heart. So this is a compilation of the things you've loved and a couple of things you've written. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. What a treasure for your whole family. Indeed. Okay, so what is one of your favorites in so, this? Do you need to refer to it? No, I okay. don't need to refer to it. Um, I'd like to tell you about the, the 1973, when I was a young missionary in Korea, there was an orphanage in, that, that a lady named Sister Huang had put together for Korean girls. She had 25 girls from age three to age 18. The 18 year olds were pretty cute. We had to be careful. Okay. But, <laughs> but um, <clears throat> we, I wanted to give them something for Christmas, but I didn't know what to do. The American servicemen would give them candy, American candy. So I couldn't compete with that. Okay. No. And I, we couldn't afford dolls for 25 mm. people. So I, we went and asked this Sister Wong, what can we do? And she said, you know, we are out of coal, and they had charcoal briquettes, which they put under the floor, and they would use it to heat the floor. It was so cold that you could still see your breath, because oh, they were yeah. so poor in 1973. Mm. But she said, we don't have any more. We're gonna, we're gonna freeze. And oh. so my companion and I, we pooled together our money, went back and got our emergency funds and everything, put it all together, and had coal briquettes delivered that would get them to maybe March. Oh, and how neat. I thought, what a terrible thing to do to little nice little girls, put coal in their stockings. Oh, my <laughs> yeah, goodness. To an American, that would be the worst. Such yeah. an opposite, right? So I thought, when, blessing, we there, right? when we go yeah. there on Christmas Day, they're just going just gonna to be bummed out because mm -hmm. what a terrible gift. We got there on Christmas Day, and I got 25 cards and handwritten cards from each one of the girls. Thank you so much for giving mm. us warmth. We're gonna, when we are warm this, this winter, we're gonna think of you. My goodness. And I left there thinking, you know, I'm spoiled. I, I want a gift, I want something fun. And I've given somebody just warmth and they treasured that. Mm. And it meant a lot to me to, to open my eyes to see Oh, a broader perspective than I had in America. I was just going to say that, the yeah. perspective change. So, Richard, is that one of your most memorable Christmases? Sure, or yeah. do you have others that... Well, <laughs> but you know, they, they kind of blend together. Yes. But when you do they something... They get foggy in yeah, here for me. <laughs> when you do something nice for someone, it stands out. Mm -hmm. right. And so this one stands out. Oh, I love that so much. <laughs> That's cool. I can't wait to tell my kids. A different yeah. meaning of coal. Yeah. And is yeah. that story in here? It's in, it's in there. Oh, that is so good. Well, and I've noticed as I've aged, like as a young girl, that magical of receiving gifts maybe yeah. meant a lot. And then I still connect to our traditions, the Polar Express, which I've tried to bring along. But then as a young mother and trying to provide for my kids, now as a grandma, like a totally different perspective. Do you have different times that meant something different mm. with Christmas time? Yes, I think. When, when you're a kid, it's just like, what did I get? What did totally. I get? Totally. And when you're older and wiser, you're like more like, what can I give? What totally. can I give? Mm -hmm. But I have a great memory of, I grew up in Springville. My parents did not have very much money at all. But we always had lots of gifts for Christmas. And I would look at them, and they would have literally nothing. They'd give each other nothing, a bottle of cologne or something like that. And I would think, wow, it's really bad to be an adult. I never grow up because I want stuff, and my parents don't get stuff. And by the time you get all theirs, and, I'm like, yeah, I'm good. We'll wrap up the yeah, jacket I wore. Yeah. <laughs> and then when I got a little bit older, I realized, oh my gosh, my parents got nothing, so I could have everything. Mm -hmm. And that's what parents do. Mm -hmm. Parents. Uh, sacrifice to give to their children, grandparents sacrifice to give to their children and grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And it's even more meaningful when you're giving than when you're receiving. We right. learn as we get yeah. older. Have you had experiences with your family that you've chosen like a specific thing to give back to? Or do, like um, a group or anything? We do, we do sub for Santa. Oh. We've done that and we had great experiences sometimes when we didn't have any money at all. I played Santa. Oh. And I, that was in the old days and I had to have padding. Uh -huh. Now I can do it with no padding. You so, played Santa. Yes. That is magical yes. in itself. I have a Santa suit and I played Santa oh. for lots of events over the years. Oh, that's and, neat. Uh, that's really special. Yeah. 
Did you ever do it for your children and did they ever catch on? Well, <laughs> I did it once and my oldest daughter was four and we had to explain to her that I was Santa's helper uh -huh. and that when, when she came she had to help pretend and she'd sit on my lap and, and pretend and so we did and she was nice, she told me what she wanted mm -hmm. and then she walked away and then she turned around and ran back and kissed me. Oh, and it was so sweet. sweet. I'll never forget it. <laughs> oh, and everyone else is like, yeah. oh, she loves, oh Santa. she loves Santa. Yeah, that's Richard, special. Well, we yeah. could have you here oh, and my just goodness, share yes. your stories. Yeah. So Time we're going to have to go home and read this and thank you. Thank, well, thank you, you for, for giving this to us. What is the yeah. one thing that you're looking forward to this Christmas season? Again, it's going to see a Christmas carol. Mm -hmm. uh, the mm -hmm. play. And I would encourage everybody to, to read the book. It's everywhere. Mm -hmm. You can get a copy for anyone. Or listen to someone read it. It's beautiful in Dickens' words. I'm obnoxious. I whisper to Colleen, this is what they said, but Dickens said this. Oh. It didn't matter the way he said oh. it. Oh, no, I think original. Hey, I'm obnoxious. When, no, when that's not. Original that's cool. sometimes okay. is the best. Well, Good we, we appreciate that. Thank, Thank you, Richard. Thank you so much. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Coming up next on Studio Chatter, we're expecting a visit with the Big Elf himself.